I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Commander Cory Shepard took down Matriarch Benezia and was able to free the very last Rachni Queen, saving an entire species. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect video on Insanity Difficulty. And in this episode, we are going to tackle the remaining side quests that we can before the next episode, which is going to be the Bring Down the Sky DLC, which is incredible DLC that it's included in the Legendary Edition. I'm very excited for it. Uh, but in today's episode, let's hope that we can finish everything that we need to do level 26 Corey Shepard did not get a single level last episode which is really unfortunate because we want to get to level 30 as soon as possible before we go and do the bring down the DL the bring down the bring down the DLC sky anyways we're gonna leave the Citadel and head to a very new cluster one that we've never been able to go to uh that actually appears once you complete Novaria and that is the six theta cluster and we're going to go to the Acheron system. Upon arriving in the Acheron system, we can find this carbonaceous asteroid that we can go ahead and survey for. Even though we've completed all of the collection quests, we can scan this to find yet another Turian insignia from the Epris colony. Lucky, lucky, lucky us. On the planet of Groselgen, we can go ahead and survey that to find a large deposit of magnesium. And finally, we can land on the planet of Altahe. Alt, Alt, Altahe. Alta. I don't know, but it's an exceptional form of planet called a Roche World. With a bunch of different things that we'll be able to discover here. So, let's go ahead and land. Taking with us a party of Liara and Garrus Vicarian. Landing on the planet, we have a few different areas that we can go to. And lucky for us, this is a nice place that we can go so we'll set the first location and head to a crash pod which commander Corey Shepard is able to bypass and collect a bunch of new items everything we do is for the XP as commander Corey Shepard discovers a Samarium deposit and she was able to discover a deposit of gold and she was also able to discover a nearby Asari capsule that contained Yet again, more Matriarch Delanaga's writings. Which, by the way, I do recommend doing that side quest. It's going to pay off when we get to Mass Effect 3. And nearby, we'll discover a listening post that seems to have... Weird nest things sitting outside. As we approach, we discover none other than Rachni. Rachni soldiers from Novaria apparently have made it off of Novaria and are attacking. Now, these are not ones, as you would think, from the Queen. No, no, no. These are, well, you'll see. But we're going to take out as many as we can while we are in the Mako for that free XP. And, of course, it ain't hard to do so, even though all of their attacks go through the Mako shields. Taking them all out for a ton of XP. It seems that we can explore this place, but we're not going to yet because... Anomalies picked up that there was another Rachni colony nearby. In fact, it's right here. And if we're lucky, this will be enough experience to propel us to level 27. We see that something else that we've never seen before gets out of one of the colonies, a Rachni brood warrior and a bunch of soldiers coming at us. For an incredible amount of experience at 3,100 from that one nest. Let's hope we get that much from every single one. And this should be the final colony that we need to propel us to level 37. And there we go. The final colony falls. We need to head back to the listening post as we hit level 27. Back at the listening post, it's time to save our game and head inside. And when we arrive, everything seems pretty clear, except for, you know, the dead guards and bunkers set up and everything else. But we have two decryptions that we can set up. After opening those, it appeared that we could only head inside the main room, and immediately we saw that there were enemies nearby, so we positioned to get ready to take them out. 
Coming inside, we found a bunch of workers already fast approaching. These ones being the easy ones that you can just shoot before they explode. We were able to take them out. Rachni soldiers sitting on the side. But because of the power of the high explosive rounds that we have, we were able to put them down pretty quickly. Bodies seem to be destroyed as we approach the final room. We can grab an upgrade quick okay, upgrade. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Heading into the final room that we can. We can head to the room on the left here. To find a bunch of items that we can grab. As well as what appears to be little rachni eggs that you can actually shoot and explode. They don't do anything, but hey! You can do it. Heading into the room on the right here, the final room that we can go into in the listening post data. Find some more eggs. Get rid of them. They don't do anything. It doesn't actually matter. But in front of us looks like an emergency FTL comm, which we'll go Mayday. ahead and open. Mayday. Mayday. This is Lieutenant Marie Durand, 314th Infantry Alliance 10th Frontier Division. The listening post has been overrun by unidentified hostile life forms. Request immediate extraction. Interesting. Commander, you see this? They just received a supply run two days ago. The Rachni worked fast. Tell me about that supply ship. This planet is supposed to be uninhabited. The Rachni didn't come from nowhere. Checking. This base is supplied by drone freighters. Dispatched at irregular intervals from different depots to reduce the likelihood of tracking. I have it. This one came from Argos Row. Wherever it is, there's probably more Rachni there. Let's get to the bottom of this. Very well, Shepard. The Rachni infestation on Alt A seems to be the result of a supply drop from Argos Row. The logs downloaded from the freighter should allow you to backtrack the ship's course to its origins. We downloaded the log for got some experience and headed back to the Normandy. But she wasn't done yet as she headed to the neighboring system of Erebus. On the planet of Quajai, she was able to survey to find a deposit of platinum. And on the planet of Wormani was able to discover another Prothean data disk. And finally, she landed on the planet of Netmos. And she headed there with a party of Liara and Garrus. Upon landing, she discovered a bunch of nearby anomalies, which meant for us that we were getting a lot of XP. The first thing she could find was a buried safe box, which she was able to recover for another League of One medallion. In incredibly, and right nearby, she was able to find yet another Rachni colony. As she approached some weird looking rifts in the ground, she was attacked by a bunch of different Rachni soldiers. Which means free XP for us, baby! After clearing out this Rachni colony that was nearby, she repaired the Mako while also checking out our next destination, which was over in the valley over here. Heading into this valley, she was able to find yet another weird marking here, which as she used it and drove up to it, a bunch of Rachni soldiers yet again spawned. Heading north from that, she was able to find yet another anomaly. This time, it appears these particle bores were shut down after breaking through into tunnels just below the surface. The shacks and equipment are stenciled with the logo of the Tinkara Mining Consortium, but there was no trace of the mining crew. So Shepard got out and explored the, cat the nearby shacks to get all of the items she could. And grabbed a nearby deposit of uranium while she was at it. And yet again, she was able to find a deposit of palladium. And finally, she headed south to this nearby listening post. Another one. Yet again, she could see from a distance that this one was infested with more Rachni. But it appears that people were here and were firing at these Rachni, so she came to help them out, see what she could do. Except, unfortunately, no XP was had, so... Commander Corey Shepard got out of the Normandy and approached Lieutenant Duran, who we actually received the distress signal from on that First listening Lieutenant post. Lieutenant Duran, ma'am. Theta. Third Brigade, 14th Infantry Regiment. And I am damn glad to see you. And we're here to help. We heard you needed some backup. 
Actually, we need to get the hell out of here. But I guess your ship couldn't carry us all. They dropped us here a few months back. We get supplies every couple weeks. We didn't see anything local that was more dangerous than lichen. Yesterday, these animals started coming out of the ground. No idea where they're from. This is what's left out of 90 men. I'm the ranking officer. Out of 90 men, this is all that's we left. We do have a ship in orbit. We could bombard them. Wouldn't do much good. They're moving around deep underground. The only time they come near the surface, and they're right on our position. You bombard them. You take us out, too. Why are you out here in the first place? There's been a lot of pirate activity in this cluster. We set up a chain of listening posts in the local systems, in case they have a staging base. They're called Rachni. You get a supply ship in recently? Yeah, but that was an Alliance ship, Commander. I mean, it was a drone, running on automatics. But what... We don't have time to explain. Are you secure here? What we just fought was a probe. Our seismic sensors are picking up a crap load more on their way up from underground. We've got five minutes, tops. We might be able to hold them off if we were at peak, but you can see the fighting's busted this place up. Yeah, you know what? We'll help, though. Do what you can to secure your position. We'll see if we can get some of your defenses operational. Aye, aye, Commander. You heard the woman. Everybody pool magazines and grenades. Take a leak and a drink while you can. And if anyone wants a smoke, it's as good a time as any. But it looks like we have another uh, Arachni swarm approaching, it says, in 30 seconds. So we'll see what we can do here by going and using this generator over here. Hopefully we can open that up and get some turrets working for us. And we can use these items in the back here in the shacks to get these items, I mean. And go ahead and help them destroy this Rachni swarm that's coming at them. We should be able to do this pretty easy. We're trained in dealing with Rachni. Unfortunately, you don't get any XP as you deal with these Rachni swarms. But you are able to help out Lieutenant Duran. Not much time left, Commander. Now, like I was saying, as long as you come up to the generator and use it, you can connect the Mako. The Mako does not have to be next to it to do that. In 15 seconds, we'll have to deal with our second large wave. And because of the changes made in the Legendary Edition, we're actually going to disconnect the Mako and just go ahead and use that because it's going to make everything just much easier and faster to kill the second wave. We're not going to deal with it on foot. Back in the day, you would wa you would have wanted to, but there's no real reason for that now. So we'll just use the Mako to destroy these. After the Mako has taken its beating, we're going to get out and help them take down the remainder of these enemies on foot. Now, it may or may not be a bug that you don't get experience during these waves, but since they didn't fix it for the Legendary Edition, I'm assuming that potentially you're just not supposed to get XP here. As the last Rachni soldier falls, we'll check in with Lieutenant Durant. Holy hell, ma'am. Talk about a near-run thing. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Never mind me. Are you all right? Still on my feet, but we've been fighting for almost 26 hours straight. None of us will be standing for long. Ma'am, we're getting a signal from one of the ground scan UAVs. A big hollow space about 500 meters under the surface. Right, that must be it. That must be where they're coming from. My people aren't in any condition for a clearing operation, though. We'll take care of it. Just point us in the right direction. You don't have to do that, Commander. We've bled them. We can probably hold until a bigger ship arrives to get us off world. If you want to take a throw at it, we'll give you the coordinates. But it's your call. You saved our asses, Commander. Thanks. You're very welcome. Now, funny enough, if we continue this story to after Vermeer and after the events... Oh, uh, thank you for screaming. Uh, but if you do this after the events of Vermeer and and the the subsequent what happens after Vermeer and you're, you're able to explore the galaxy and all that, um, if you actually are... Uh, if you wait till after that, Shepard will will have a different dialogue with uh, with Lieutenant Durand over there, which is actually kind of neat. It's spoilery for me to tell you what it is now, so I won't. But just take my word for it; it's pretty cool. So there is a mine that is filled with Rachni that we are going to go take out. But before we do that, we have to grab the nearby deposit of titanium, and of course. 
grab the debris that we can grab. Everything we do now is for the XP. Finally, we can head into the Rachni infested mines. And I definitely, definitely recommend saving your game before you head inside. But it's time to deal with some Rachni. And upon we get getting into the first room, we'll discover a containment cell and a crate that we can decrypt. And that's a perfect time to save the game because as we go into the mine itself, we're going to deal with a lot of Rachni. So let's head in, see what we can find here. You can immediately see some of these swarms that's going to send a ton of Rachni out. We're going to go ahead and pop Liara's singularity here. They're right on top of us as we approach. Can't do anything. Let's see if we can toss this one across. Remember that your shields are useless when fighting these because their toxic is too good. The first hole of Rachni taken down. Another one approaching. Because of the high-powered shots that we have, we're able to take this thing down and it wasn't even able to get close to us. Another one coming out of another vent. This one actually sending two after us. Getting tossed across the room as we're hit by the poison, unfortunately. S lifting it into the air so that we can take it down a little bit easier. Also finding a crate in the back containing a Colossus 9 light armor. And another Rachni spawning immediately behind us. Fortunately missing the, sta the stasis that we sent, so we'll go ahead and lift this one as well with Liara. So that we can finish it off all nice. Immediately equipping that Colossus 9 that we just picked up, as it's so very good. Liara equipping the Colossus that Shepard was just wearing. Another Rachni appearing, this time two of them. Liara's Singularity putting both of them into the sky. Finally, the last Rachni has fallen, which means we can explore deeper into the mines see what we can find. Heading down here, we find another room with more Rachni popping out. Going ahead and using Garrus, we're going to overload the nearby container, causing more explosive damage than normal to these guys as we take them down and focus on the next Rachni, both going down even more approaching as we do so. Another Singularity being tossed out and a Brood Warrior the first one that we have to face on foot, we're going to go ahead and put it into a stasis. As it goes down for a huge amount of XP. And looting the room. Heading back to use the other tunnel. Knowing that this was going to be the last of the Rachni. Heading inside. Commander Corey Shepard was able to get them to show up. Records of the Rachni War suggest brood warriors. The male gender Rachni only fight when a hive is severely pressed. It's safe to say that we've eliminated the Rachni on Netmos. And the final one fell. And we were able to loot the rest of the room. And it was time to head out of the mines and back to the Normandy because that was all that we could do on Netmos. In fact, Lieutenant Duran doesn't even care that we took down this mine. This was a fully optional thing that we could do. And with that, it was time to head. And just like that, after completing the two listening posts, it was time to head to the Argus Row Cluster. And the new system that opened up for us, the Gorgon system. Gorgon, Gorgon. Darn you, small soldiers. And out of all of the planets that were here, not a single one could be scanned. However, we were able to find an unidentified space facility. This space station appears to have been assembled from used off the shelf civilian ship modules of diverse origins. No obvious hole markings, and it's not broadcasting any ID signals. So, Commander Corey Shepard boarded with a party of Liara and Garrus. If you check our journal, the data we found at Listening Post Theta indicated that a supply ship came from Depot Sigma 23. 
in the Gorgon system just before the attacks on Listening Post Alpha and Theta. That supply depot is likely where the Rachni infestation originated. And guess where we are? Immediately when we get on the ship, we can tell that there are already enemies nearby. It is very useful to bring somebody with the powers of, of biotics for this fight. In fact, Garrus, probably not even the best that we could choose here. Hopefully we can take them out. Arachnite soldier approaches. Smaller enemies also nearby, but these are just workers. Workers that are very easy to deal with. As long as they don't explode, we can take care of them, no problem. This Arachnite soldier, though, needs to get finished off. Looking around the ship, we find some weapon lockers that can be decrypted. Caden is actually an incredibly strong squad mate to bring on this mission. His use of neural shock is going to be incredibly useful. And, well, you know, he has decryption as well, which is you know, pretty handy. Making our way through the maze that is this ship and its storage boxes, we discover a back door. Inside, an aid station. Pretty helpful. And some rooms that we can head into. Including yet another medical station and a bunch of items. Heading into the cockpit. We find... Nothing. Which means that there's only one room left to explore. As we head in... It's empty. Except for a terminal and what appears to be a bomb? Personal data recorder for Major Elena Flores. Play the first entry. Sigma-23 is almost fully operational. The barracks and storage lockers are complete and we've begun stocking the munitions. It's highly unlikely the Alliance will patrol in the nebula. I expect our only risk will be from pirates, and who will believe them? Looks like we'll have space for two reinforced platoons of Cerberus commandos. Cerberus? I do not think I have heard of that organization before. Uh... Liara, Liara you... We already took... Ugh. Play the second entry. The package arrived today for field testing. I'm told they're fundamentally similar to the units being developed on Novaria. They promise this batch will be stable. Something about them developing in proximity to the master control unit. We detected some pirates setting up an anchorage in a neighboring system. I think we'll try deploying them there first. Play the last entry. They've escaped containment. Clever bastards. We treated them like animals. We should have treated them like POWs. They're spreading. Boarding the supply ships and sending them to random destinations. They'll be all over the cluster in a week. General, if you recover this message, my advice is, screw the Rachni. They're too smart. Use one of the other projects. Flores, signing off. For the final time. It seems Binary Helix were not the only ones foolish enough to meddle with the Rachni. Interesting, but how did Cerberus get access to them? Let's go. The escape arachni definitely came from this station, though the motives behind this Cerberus group are vague. To prevent further contamination, arm the station's scuttle charges and evacuate to the Normandy. And we'll go ahead and download those those logs for XP, and then we have 110 seconds to get the heck off of this ship. But it looks like there's going to be some enemies that are going to want to prevent us from doing that, including some workers and some soldiers that we are going to want to kill as soon as possible get as much xp as we can we only have 70 seconds so we need to hurry up 52 left an easy decryption let's go ahead and do that real quick kill them as they approach and a technician kit waiting for us as well that we can grab and a wetware kit grabbing all of the loot as we can time does not stop while you are decrypting so keep it moving Kill as much as you can and get the heck out of here. 20 seconds remaining. As Commander Corey Shepard and her crew approaches the final door, gets into the Normandy, and blasts the heck out of here. Let's go. Whew. That was a little sketchy. We look at our journal. We'll see that we've declared the base of Rachni and discovered that, that, that this was yet another of Cerberus' secret experiments. At least they won't be breeding Rachni again anytime soon. Which is, you know, kind of handy. And we have some more side quests that we can do, including the Doctor at Risk. While we were on Novaria, we found a log listing an unauthorized transmission. Apparently, someone thinks a doctor located in the Newton system is in grave danger. Unfortunately, it appears that the message was intercepted by Novaria security before it could be delivered. 
which means Shepard is heading towards the Kepler Verge cluster and the Newton system. Message coming in. Patching it through. I've received some information I thought you'd want to see, Commander. Someone is killing former Alliance scientists. There have been four deaths in the past month. We haven't heard from Hackett in a long time. Now, something about this is your background actually will change a little bit of this. So if your background is Soul Survivor, uh, you'll hear a little bit more of this, which guess what ours is? I'm happy to look into it, Admiral. What can you tell me? We found a connection between the scientists and you. They all worked on a classified project several years ago on a coos. This can't have anything to do with what happened to me on a coos. Those Thresher Maws killed dozens of soldiers. If this was more than just an accident, we need to know. Commander, Shepard, what you do with this is up to you. I just thought you'd want to know. There was one other scientist on the project, Dr. Wayne. I'm transmitting his last known coordinates. Good luck. Fifth lead out. Dr. Wayne, he says. So, Shepard went and explored the galaxy, finding this planet of Clint Corey. Cool name, by the way, Clint Corey. It's famously claimed by the eccentric Volus billionaire. He claims that a vision of a higher being told him to seek on Clint Corey the lost crypts of beings of light. These entities were supposedly created at the dawn of time to protect organic life from synthetic machine devils. Shoal has been excavating on Clint Corey's toxic surface for two decades. No government has valued the world enough to evict his small army. We could survey that to find yet another Matriarch Delanaga's writings. Interestingly enough, the lost crypts of beings of light. On Jun Crow, she's able to survey that to find a large concentration of hydrogen. And finally, on the planet Oatsrum, where she can land. There's a multiracial effort underway to catalog and preserve unique genetic, genetic diversity of Otterum's vibrant young biosphere. Exogenic core in the Hyovin Geonemic, Geonomic, ge ge Genomics, whatever, represent the alliance to share the effort. So let's go ahead and land. And finally, on this planet, we'll be taking a crew of Rex and Garrus. Liara, stay in home for this one. The only reason that I'm bringing uh, Rex with us is so that I can put him in the Phoenix Nine armor. That is literally the only reason. Uh, yeah, yep, you're welcome. He's going to be so mad at me. Now, following an anomaly, we were able to find these, I don't know, space beetles? They look kind of cool. Oh, God, they explode. All right, well, let's not do that. Anyways, we can find a Turian corpse down here and find that he had a Turian insignia for the Bostra outpost. Remember, everything we do now is just for XP. Up on a plateau nearby, we were able to discover yet another crashed probe. We were also able to discover how cute Rex is. Now, heading down, we were able to find a facility, and immediately, it looks like enemies are trying to target us here. Unfortunately for me, my target is gone. I no longer have that. I don't know what happened there. But as we approach this underground facility, well, we can take them out anyways. Now, before heading into that facility there, we want to make sure that we get everything we can, including this palladium deposit. And one of my favorite little Easter eggs in the game exists over here. Which, over here, we can find another deposit. But those space cow things, dear kangaroos, are also here. Including a shifty-looking cow. Which, if we go and examine the shifty-looking cow... Huh. And as you can notice that we lost two credits there. Oh, I guess we'll just run away. And we lose more credit. Hey, what are you doing? The shifty cow seems to be following us. And it stole more. Stop stealing my credits, cow. How dare you? Now, here's the thing about the shifty, the shifty, the shifty cow, shifty looking cow. If you kill it. It will actually respawn in just a couple of minutes uh, and actually is based off an Easter egg that the lead technical designer, Dusty Everman, actually talked about where he said that he loved the history of the Shifty Cow Easter egg that the, when the character ar artist designed the Space Cow with two extra arms, the lead designer was creeped out. He said something along the lines of, you can't trust any animal that can milk itself. Those extra little hands look so grabby. So Preston, 
the lead designer came up with the idea of the shifty cow. If you turn on your back on him, those creepy little hands are going to go to work. I love that. Love that Easter egg. Anyways, we need to do what we're here to do, and that's to find these dead scientists. By heading to the final place that we can, that underground facility that had a bunch of people sitting outside ready to go. So heading inside, we'll see a bunch of bodies nearby, but these are not the mercs that we just murdered. We're going to save our game and head inside. Lucky for us, we brought a darn prince. Oh, he's so pretty. Anyways, come on, Rex. We got stuff to do. Looting the first room for all the free items we can. Let's head into the main room and get ready to take down some mercs. Looks like we got a bunch of them waiting for us in here. Go ahead and overload this one here. As more approach us, these mercenaries are going to go down super quickly because of how strong our team actually is right now. Go ahead and pop barrier here. As a Krogan actually stands before us. We're going to go ahead and actually put this one into stasis. We're going to warp it first and put it into stasis so that we can hopefully do some damage to this Krogan. The Krogan has been defeated thanks to the work of Rex and friends. Using another singularity and a, another barrier, we have more Krogan rushing into attack. Finally, let's take down the Krogan. Big old stasis and a warp from a maxed out Rex. Down goes the Krogan. After looting the whole room, we proceed to the back, finding more bodies as we go. We only have one way we can go. Stay back. I've got no grief with you. All I want is this bastard. Please. He's a madman. Mr. Toombs, you're insane. You need help. Shut up. You don't get to lie. You don't. Shepard? My God. Shepard, is that you? But you died, Tombs. Tombs? But you were on a coast. I, I saw the Thresher mob pull you under. They took me, Shepard. The scientists. You can't prove any of this. This man is delusional. See, they were running tests on the Thresher maws. They let those things hit us just to watch and study. I woke up in a holding cell. The scientists were delighted I'd survived. Now they had someone to run tests on. I didn't know, man. Tombs, I, I didn't see anybody. If I'd seen you, I would have come back for you, I swear. You can't believe Tombs. He doesn't have any proof. I demand a fair trial. Shepard was at Akuz. That's all the proof she needs. Damn right, Rex. This man deserves to die, Shepard. For you, for me, for everyone else in the unit. Are you with me? And... With a high enough charm, we can convince him that this isn't justice. You're better than this, Tombs. You're not like them. Don't tell me who I am. You got away with a few scratches and a scary reputation. The rest of the unit died, and I was tortured for years, Shepard. You can't judge me. You don't have the right. I, you're Tombs, right. if I could have helped you on a coup, I would have. All I can do is help now. Let me. Okay. I'm no murderer. They couldn't make me one. Just as long as he goes to trial. Maybe the screaming will stop now. I don't know. Those bastards can't hurt you anymore. Joker, tell the Fifth Fleet we need a ship for pickup. Aye, aye, Commander. Toom stares morosely on the floor, lost in his memories. You give the scientists a shove towards the door. Your mission is complete. The Alliance courts will take it from here. And we're able to exit the bunker. And that, my friends, is all we can do for Toombs. The guy who was a victim, yet again, of Cerberus. You convince Toombs to let the scientist live so he can stand trial for his actions. Toombs can now get the therapy he needs after his years of torture, and the scientist will spend the rest of his life in prison. We need to head to the Normandy and report this to Admiral Hackett, which we can do just by using Message the galaxy map. In. Patching it through. 
I reviewed your report on the situation, Commander. I'm glad to see you were able to take Dr. Wayne in alive. Now we can put him on trial and get some answers. Corporal Toombs seems to have found some closure. Hopefully with therapy, he'll have a normal life again someday. I hope this helped you find some peace, Commander. Thank you. Fit fleet out. So if we look at our journal, we only have really one that we can do right now, the Besieged Base, and that's for reaching Paragon about 80% or so. Biotic fanatics have taken over a medical station and drugged innocent researchers to serve as human shields. We must eliminate the biotics while minimizing innocent casualties. So we are heading to the medical base on Chohi, located in the Caucus system of the Hades Gamma Cluster. And getting there on the planet of Zayatar, she was able to survey for a thing of mercury. On Ferengor, she was able to survey to find Polonium. And finally, she could land it land on the planet of Chohi. Chohi? I don't know. The Serta Foundation has established a research outpost to investigate the native subterranean life, which shows incredible resilience to extremes of heat and cold. So she headed down with a party, yet again, of Liara and Garrus. And she headed towards a bunch of anomalies that were nearby. And upon arriving, she was able to find a bunch of different stuff, including some locked crates, which contained Matriarch Delanaga's writings, yet again. Inside, she was able to find a technician kit, with which had even more of Matriarch Delanaga's writings. A wall safe, which contained... Tread arounds and even more Matriarch Delanaga's writings. Three just in this one little area. Now, she could also deactivate this transmitter tower. Close to the transmitter, your comms pick up a recording of a wistful string quartet. You, you power the system down. Whoever lived here, they haven't been back for some time. The crates are covered with Choi's chalky dust, and the status lights of the shack indicate its atmosphere ran out long ago. Interesting. And she was able to find a deposit of plutonium. But she headed towards another anomaly that was detected on her map that appeared to have some enemies nearby. Upon approaching, she found a bunch of mercenaries. She sent one of the enemies completely flying off the planet, which actually, actually ended up killing it. That was cool. She found nearby a corpse that she was able to examine to find that that person must have died while attempting to salvage a crash satellite. But she was able to discover yet another crash probe. Now, sensors indicated that there was something happening in this little valley area, so she headed for it to discover yet another Thresher Maw. And finally, after a long fought battle, yet again, Commander Corey Shepard was able to take down the evil Thresher Ma and was able to get a deposit of mercury, which meant that there was only one spot left, and that was the besieged base itself. Now, there was nothing outside this besieged base, so she saved the game and headed inside. Heading inside, we're going to have to try to save as many people as we possibly can. This is going to be tricky. I definitely recommend saving before entering inside. Using the door, we're going to go ahead and start trying to get people to come out to us. Shooting inside. Putting our squad over on the sides here so that they don't mess up. See if we can get people to come to us. Go ahead and cast barrier on ourselves so that we avoid the biotic. As much as we can. Liara casting singularity on the ones in the back. Commander Corey Shepard taking down the biotic terrorist that was running ahead. We can easily do that with the power of stasis. Terrorist leader was taken down. And with that, we cleared the facility and all the civilians are safe, though still chattering to themselves and screaming at the garbage cans. Evolution of humanity, huh? These biotics didn't seem that different from the other scum we deal with. And we'll get 1,200 experience, 1,300 experience for completing this. 
besieged base quest. We talked to them. Where is... Did you see? All of these scientists are, unfortunately, going to have some recovery to do. But we can finish exploring the base and get as many items as possible. And now that we've looted the entire place, it's time to leave. This is a very uh, tricky spot because you can't destroy any of the canisters that are nearby. You can't have any of your squad doing anything. You have to make sure that uh, the biotic terrorists that you're attacking, that they don't accidentally shoot through a scientist to shoot at you. Uh, you have to make sure that you don't have anything that's going to like explode and hit them. So you can't use grenades or like huge powers or anything like that. Um, so we were able to do it the Paragon way. You don't really get XP anyways. So... It's not a big deal. I got to be honest, though, we're approaching the end of this game, and I'm a little worried about maxing out our Shepherd. I did see there was a patch the other day on June 1st that uh, made it so that you could reach max level. Apparently, there was a bug that was actually preventing it, and I'm very curious if we've done too much before that bug was implemented to actually hit level 30. I sincerely hope that's not the case, but... I guess we'll find out. So we'll head to the Normandy. That's everything that we can do on the planet of Chuhi. So let's head back. Message coming in. Patching it through. I didn't think it could be done, Commander. You managed to secure the base and neutralize the biotics without a single civilian casualty. Yeah, I'm awesome. Just doing my job, Admiral. I couldn't let innocent lives be lost. I wish every soldier had your definition of just doing your job. You're a credit to the uniform, Shepard. We're in your debt. Fit fleet out. And we'll be rewarded for our points there. 24 Paragon points for not killing anybody. And if we look at our assignments, we will have completed every single assignment we possibly could at this point, except for the one, this, the Conrad Werner fan. That's it. That's the only one. And then we have Vermeyer in Race Against Time, and that's it, which is crazy. Now, if you do have 80% Renegade, if you were able to put enough points into Intimidate so that you could potentially use the Laura Keen quest or, or dialogue to get to 80% Renegade, you could also have the negotiation on a character as well. Unfortunately, we do not on Corey Shepard, but on Renegade Shepard, uh, we will be able to do that quest. So I will be showing that as well when we have our Renegade episode, uh, which should be coming shortly. And that will do it for today's episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition right here on Missile Dine Online. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, all of the side quests that we could do. They're all done. That's it. So all that's left is the Bring Down the Sky DLC, Vermeyer, and then whatever happens after Vermeyer. We're actually going to save the Bring Down the Sky DLC for after Vermeyer, uh, but I'm really, really excited to do it. I think it's going to be a really, a really good time. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premiere every single day around 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys. And I will see you in the next episode. Remember, never give up, never surrender to biotic terrorists. Nailed it. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.